It's a tour you can take sitting home by yourself. It's time once more to go Jeff your shelf. Hey friends, pour yourself something nice. Preferably something that will lie to you and tell you everything's going to be okay. Because we're going to be here for a while. I got three shelves to go through with you and many, many authors and many publishers. So sit tight and 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 um, put on some music maybe in the background. Chill out. We're gonna start with this shelf. This is the most random shelf I have. Here you will see the Little Books series. This is by Borderlands. This is series two, which I got for a good price, direct from the publisher. Very, very, very generous, great price on these first 15 because they include this little baby um a little silver book of sharp shiny slivers by joe hill which was a bit of a um of a of a brouhaha over that and there was problems with it for the people who had been collecting series two um i came in and, and got these all from the publisher Great price. And then I continued with Series 3. Now we're almost done. There are 14 books here. The last one is coming to me very soon to round the set out. And then I'll get the slipcase for these last five. And and that'll do it. That'll be Series 2 and 3 little books. I never got Series 1. Um, that's kind of pricey now. And, you know, I'm my name is not Secondary Terry. I do not go after the secondary market book prices so um <coughs> up here is a book i'm actually in <laughs> oh shameless plug if you look back early on this channel you'll see i did some commercials for this book um i wrote a piece called the cure for parenthood in here it's it's kind of confusing as hell then this is my tbr pile right here i'm reading behind her eyes by sandra uh, sarah pinborough fantastic uh, author this is a this is an interesting book I'm not flying through it like I thought I would but I like it so so I'm 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 kind of hanging in there um, I love her writing and the story is intriguing I just don't know where it's gonna go yet but everybody says it's got a crazy twist at the end these over here are um, the the books I've read <laughs> before Suntup did them 1984 and the Exorcist um, so when, um, when those books were announced as Suntup editions, I dug up the paperbacks just to get a kick out of it, just to see them again. This I bought before I knew Suntup was going to do replay because everybody had been talking about how they hoped, um, Suntup would do replay and, and, and the way they raved about it, I said, I got to read it. So I saw this at a thrift shop for 95 cents. It's a first edition paperback. So I had to get it. Probably won't won't read this because I'm because I'm I'm gonna get the Sun Top edition. So that's that. So let's move these out of the way and get to what's behind. What's behind this stack of books is another stack of books. Now I promised this would be the most random shelf I own, um, and it is. It is. It very much is. Um, these are. This is an incomplete set of my Polinick books. So Chuck Polinick, author of Fight Club, awesome author, love his stuff. And um, I have a bunch of other um, trade editions. I just don't have room, and I had to decide. So we'll start with the Polinicks. This is unsigned, haunted. Uh, <laughs> I worked at an internship at this uh, medical software company. And um, I, I read this book while I went to lunch, and I, I read it while I ate Subway. And I cannot eat an Italian sub from Subway without getting sick because of this book. It imprinted and it, it made an association with, um, with cold cuts that I can't shake. So, yeah, this is not signed, but... Uh, it's it's a book that that's traveled with me, so it gets it gets props. 
Then we have, um, 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 I love this. This is a great book, Adjustment Day. If you haven't read this, this is, this is a crazy, creepy book about what can happen with identity politics if, if identity politics just completely takes us over. Um, it is a brilliant book, and um, um, I got it signed. I believe I bought it from Powell's in uh, Portland, Oregon, I believe. So I uh, was really, really happy to get it, and I immediately read it. Then <laughs> I had to get this because this is an independent book day uh, release. It's a signed paperback edition. Um, but, oh, man, look at that cover. That cover is just fantastic. Um, and if you read the, read the book, then you know exactly what it represents, and it's so fitting. Then, um, let me see. I'll go to, okay, so this was The Invention of Sound. I have not read this yet. One was from Books A Million. One was from VJ Books. Um, and uh, they're both signed, both at a great price. Um, what's interesting is the one I got from VJ Books. This front board, I don't know if you could see it, is a lot longer. Or the, is it the back board that's a lot longer? You really see it in the pink area, how this is a lot longer. Um, it's a binding issue. It's very weird. I had it on a few books. Um, but I have not read this one yet. So I'm, I'm excited to read it. Just haven't gotten around to it. This is Fight Club 3. I bought it from Anderson Books, and it came bashed to hell. I did an unboxing for this so you could see it. What's nice about this is it's signed. It came with some of these extras. And then um, Chuck Polinick also decorated the inside with stickers. So that's a lot of fun. I really like it. We are out of coffee, he wrote. You're the cartoon, he wrote. Um, just a lot of fun. So I really, really dig it. I've never read any of the Fight Club's. I don't even have Fight Club 2, so um, i got to hold off on, on, on reading that until I get those out of the way. And then here, of course, this is Fight Club. This is the first printing 7th edition. It is signed by the man, and I got this at a thrift shop at Salvation Army for a grand total of $1.95. So I've never read... Fight Club, right? But the whole reason I started reading Chuck Palahniuk is because of Fight Club. I saw the movie, loved the movie, and I loved the narration in the movie. And I, I said, this this movie has to be based on a book just with the way this narration's going. And, and I love the way, just loved it. So um, I sought out Chuck uh, Palahniuk, and I read his other books, and I just, I yeah, this guy's a master. So... Um, but because I love the movie so much, I never read the book. I don't like to mix my uh, mediums, you know. I don't like to mix media, so I just stick with um, one or the other. But uh, I'm gonna have to correct that and read this, es especially if Paul Suntup ever does uh, an edition. Just putting that out there. All right, so let's move to the next one in line. Here we got uh, Jeff Vandermeer. Now, I bought this on a gamble. Uh, a lot of people talked about Jeff uh, Vandermeer. I uh, bought this from Sub Press. Excellent job. I've done an unboxing for this on the channel, so you could see that in detail if you'd like. And I loved it so much um, that I'm like, I, I'm going to be a fan of this guy. I haven't read anything else by him yet, unfortunately. I do have this. This is an awesome, um, very limited edition, one of 150 copies um, that are, um, I like this. This is, um, Finch. Um, actually, Sub Press is doing an omnibus of, 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 oh, I can't even say, the Am Ambergus City, the Ambergus series. I, I forgot how to pronounce, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I don't think I've ever even known, so I can't forget what I've never known. And, um, I want to get it. I just can't get it. Just can't swing it. Um, but I have this. This is number 150 out of 150. Such a cool book to get. I want to read it, and I will read it. Again, TBR pile is substantial. And then Dead Astronauts. So this is um, in written in the complete Born in the Born universe. This is the trippiest, most awesomest trade edition I own. I love it. And um, 
This one here is signed to Jeffing Off. Joy, Joy reminds us why we fight. I love that line. Jeff Vandermeer always does, well, not always. I don't know always, but he writes a little extra, these leftover lines that didn't make it in the book or um, little call-outs. I just love that. He doesn't just write his name. And then this is a sub-press edition of Dead Astronauts. Um, this matches my number of Complete Born. Very, very cool book. I love the, the feel of this book. I love the size of it. Number 73 matches Complete Born. I probably won't read this. I'll read the trade edition when, um, when I get around to it. And um, move it on up my TBR pile. So, now we have David Wong. So we have Chuck Palahniuk, um, uh, uh, Jeff Vandermeer, and now David Wong. So, David Wong, man. Dig David Wong. I just, I got this from, this is the Centipede, or Centipede Press, Cemetery Dance Edition. Um, this is number 646 out of 648. <laughs> um, I read this book, and this book really hits a sweet spot for me. Um, in humor and horror it's cosmic horror and just so trippy and funny and just brilliant um great book i loved it loved it loved it so much um i read the trilogy so uh this one this book is full of spiders as john dies at the end part two this is the best book in the series in my opinion um even better than the first and then what in the hell did i just read or what the hell did i just read this I got through Nocturnal Reader's Box, and it's a signed edition. Um, just as good as the first one. Um, again, I think number two wins the day, but uh, it's it's comparing good to great. You know, I, I loved them all. I thought, in fact, I think they're all great. And then this one came out. So this has updated material. Um, so it's a special, updated special edition. Uh, I just had to get it. Because uh, I love the book so much. It was affordable. Got it on Amazon. And that, that cover, man. That cover. You know? The cover. So I haven't read the updated stuff. Apparently, it's um, the characters talking like 10 years after the event in um, in the books. And, oh, <laughs> I neglected his sci-fi stuff. So, futuristic violence and fancy suits. Haven't read it. And Zoe punches the future future in in the dick. Um, haven't read this one either. But because I love all those other books from uh, David Wong, I had to get these, and I believe there's going to be another one. These are not signed, um, which is a, a rare honor for me to have on my very limited space, some unsigned editions. But that's how it goes, you know? That's how it goes, David Wong. So that's the entirety of my David Wong collection. I have more Chuck Palahniuk, like I said, downstairs. And more Patrick McCabe. Now, these two books um, are his best. I just love Emerald Germs of Ireland by Patrick McCabe. This is as bleak a uh, dark comedy as you're ever going to um, read. I do don't know if you could find this. Patrick McKay books are not that easy to find. They are pretty much, um, I mean, they're 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 not rare. They're just I think they're just out of print, and I I don't think there's that much demand here in the states for for Patrick McKay. But I I love this author. He is brilliant. And and look at this little treat. This is me in sophomore year of high school. Get a look at that. You could freeze it if you'd like. That's that's as much as you're gonna see of that. Um, Patrick McCabe is genius. Love him. This is the first book I've read by him, and it is among my most favorite books. This is The Butcher Boy. Um, it is up there with The Road, in my opinion. It, it's also, it's it's also, it's not, you, you have to be patient with the book. It's written in a different style. He takes certain liberties with punctuation and, and grammar and all those things, and um, you kind of have to get into the rhythm of the book. It's a very unreliable narrator, um, and you're in his head the whole book, so it jumps around a bit. This is another one of those books where the board is longer than the other. Look at that. That's crazy long. But I got this on eBay 
for like twelve dollars and it's a signed first edition or i think i got it for cheaper than that like eight dollars and it's signed it's a signed first edition by patrick mccabe for melania melania best wishes patrick um i don't know if that's donald trump's wife mrs trump i don't know but it's melania and i have it and uh love it i treasure this book i've never read this copy but i've read the butcher boy a few times um several times and it's it's just an amazing read not for everybody i suppose um but this is this is heartbreaking horrific uh brilliant just brilliant so so that's my most random shelf next uh we'll be going to uh my mccammon tremblay and barker shelf so uh buckle up for that and uh we'll get right over there as threatened, here's the next shelf on the tour. This is uh, a number of publishers, uh, but three... Oh, actually, four authors. Oops, I forgot um, that I have uh, Steve Graham Jones represented as well. So, let's get started with Barker. For me, King and Barker were, were the top two uh, authors. And as a teenager, I just read everything by those two. And um, I think Barker is a better writer and King is a better storyteller. If, uh, if that gets you mad, I'm sorry. You scream into a pillow or something. I don't know. So this is my Funko Pop. This I had um, uh, screaming model kits. And this was the, a cube I had that went with the pinhead model. And then this is a plastic thing that I keep things in. Things that I cannot show you. So we'll move this out the way. So here we have uh, unsigned trade edition of The Thief of Always. Because it, it's a great book and it's uh, illustrated by Barker. I only read it once, but it, it left an impression and I really loved it. So I've always wanted to go back to it. Um, again, just the regular trade edition. But uh, this to me feels like King's Eyes of the Dragon, you know? It has the same sort of vibe, same sort of, um, you know, a fairy tale by a, an author I love. And, um, you know, he calls it a fable, but just a great read. Uh, I know Gauntlet did a limited edition of this, I believe, but it was Gauntlet, so I passed. Anyway, enough of that. Um, here we have Tortured Souls. Clive Barker did a bunch of dolls, or action figures, sorry, sorry, uh, with uh, McFarlane Toys. And um, each of the action figures in the first series had its own little story that went with it. I didn't buy those toys, um, so I never got to read it. But Subpress released a collected edition with Bob Eggleton um, art. And... Um, Wow, it th this was fun. It was a fun read. The the stories are a little disjointed, um, because they were just one one offs that went in the in with the action figures. Um, but it was it was a fun read, and this is a very nice volume. So I'm, I'm happy I got it. And then what do we have here? Um, this is the first Barker book I've ever read. It's the Damnation Game. Uh, this got me hooked. This is the Cemetery Dance Edition, and they did it right. This is a beautiful edition. Well done. Um, people were waiting too long, I suppose, to get their copies. This was a long wait for customers, so I scooped up one that got canceled, and I'm thrilled I did. Just a great book. W totally worthy of a limited edition. This is the second Barker book I've ever read. This is an Earthling edition. <clears throat> and um, I don't have Earthling very well represented on my shelves right now, but Earthling, uh, Paul Miller at Earthling is a great guy. And he was going through his warehouse and he had some leftover copies of some long out of print books and he offered this for sale. And I jumped on it. Um, I paid considerably more than... Um, what it retailed for at the time he threw in this postcard which is very nice 
Um, and it is unsigned, unfortunately. But no less beautiful. Just a beautiful edition. I don't know where, if you could find copies currently. Um, I'm sure you can, eBay and, and so forth. But um, uh, I, I'm definitely going to visit Weave World again. And, and this will be the book I read when I do so. Awesome, awesome edition. Then we have the Earthling edition of Hellbound Heart. <laughs> oh my God. This is a fantastic book. Uh, beautiful leather slipcase. Um, dust jacket done by Clive himself. And um, a foreword by the woman who played Kirsty. And um, uh, I was lucky and it's signed by... I got a PC copy off of eBay. Signed by Clive Barker. Um, and I went to a convention and I met three out of the four actors who played the Cenobites, Nicholas Vince, Barbie, Barbie Wilde, and si si Simon Bamford. Um, and I got them to sign the book, even though, yes, I just told you a second ago that I don't like to mix media. Um, I didn't care. I, I, I was there. They were awesome people, just great people. I also have SST edition of Barbie Wilde's um, Voices of the Dam that I had her sign. And awesome people. And yes, since Clive Barker directed the movie, I thought fair enough to get these actors that he handpicked to sign this book. And then the woman who played um, Kirsty in the movie, Ashley Lawrence, I got her to sign it too. Um, so I treasure this book. It's worth a lot more than what I paid for it. To me, um, just getting all those signatures was, was a thrill. So anyway, let's move on to, uh, well, there's a pole coaster. Let's get that out of the way. There is like a huge bullet, um, bottle opener that really doesn't work that well. But, you know, on the shelf, shelf candy and such so here we have Tremblay I've never read Tremblay and I jumped in on the SST set when they were announced um, I bought the books one at a time he didn't offer a set price for them like he's done with uh, Mallerman and Hendrix uh, otherwise I probably would have but it's interesting because I never read Tremblay but I loved Head Full of Ghosts is the first one I read um, really fantastic book I love the way he writes and the way he presents the story and allows the reader to unpack it. I also love the Daniel Sarah art. Um, so he's one of my one of my favorite artists. So you can't pass on that. And SST does such great work. Um, and very very affordable editions. Well packed, well made, just great stuff. So. Um, you know, I, I, I am the admin at the Fans of SST Facebook page. If you want to get over there, I'll let you in. Just saying. So I read Head Full of Ghosts. I read The Cabin at the End of the World. Again, same sort of, of writing style, same sort of uh, leaving the read, letting, allowing the reader to build the story um, beyond just what was written there. So I love that. Um, and again, more Daniel Sarah art. This is really a good book. Um, it reminded me of a short story, I believe, by, oh my gosh, um, oh, I can't remember, uh, I can't recall, it was called The Nine Billion Names of God, anyway, a brilliant short story um, that hopefully I'll remember the name of the, the brilliant person who wrote that, um, and put it in the description, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll remember, I didn't read Disappearance at Devil's Rock, Plan to, want to, will. Uh, haven't read Growing Things either. Or Survivor Song. Um, I'm kind of jazzed about Survivor Song. I might put that ahead of the other ones. Um, because I'm, I'm most intrigued by it. Um, about the rabies, zombie sort of thing. So, uh, love that. Probably check that out. Then I got this. Only because uh, the uh, orange edges, the colored edges... So it was an inexpensive signed paperback edition um, that, you know, it's a book plate. But um, 
<clears throat> from Forbidden Planet in in the UK. I just jumped on it. It's like eight bucks, so had to have it for fun. Just just for a fun thing to have. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can we move on? We don't have to be contentious. And then. Head Full of Ghosts, the Graveyard Editions from Cemetery Dance. Um, I did did plan on collecting all the Cemetery Dance Graveyard Editions until I didn't. They're going to do a lot of Bentley Little. I hate Bentley Little. So I didn't want to have a shelf full of a set and see Bentley Little's name there. And I also didn't want to not get a complete set if I was going to get the set. So... Um, I had four of these. I sold three of them, got my money back basically with maybe a little extra. And then um, I decided to keep Head Full of Ghosts because I love the story so much. And uh, I do love these graveyard editions. Um, it'd been, it would have been awesome if I could have matched it to my SST, the numbers, but uh, I couldn't. By the way, my SST number is number three for this set, which... I like to brag about for no reason whatsoever. And over here we have The Only Good Indians. I did an unboxing on my channel for it. Haven't read it. Um, heard nothing but wonderful things about it. Uh, so I, I'm very excited to read it. Love, again, the work that Paul Fry at SST puts into his publications. And the art here is just so awesome. So awesome. So um, I will get to read that. This is a Japanese coffee mug. That on that side and the word heroin on that side. You've probably been staring at it this whole time wondering what the hell is with that. Well, we'll just turn it this way. And then it's not a, a drug message. Simple as that. All right. So um, a Tremblay. Um... We have some Tremblay, Barker, Stephen Graham Jones. Now we have McCammon. Now, <laughs> this is the first lettered edition I ever bought, The Listener. This is a Cemetery Dance lettered edition. Um, I paid a pretty penny for it, and I was just completely underwhelmed by what I received. And, you know, it's, it's a very understated book, <clears throat> but the differences between the tiers... Of, of this lettered edition, the numbered edition, and the trade edition were so minimal that I ended up f figuring I paid for a different color co dust jacket, a letter in the book, uh, and, and a tray case, essentially, that uh, really, I mean, the board, the, the, the materials of the cover, yes, are different than the trade edition, which I believe was cloth, and this is like like leather um and the end papers are nicer but just not not a not not enough difference to make this a lettered edition that's going to jump out um above the other levels and this is the sst edition of the listener i bought it from camelot books and oh my gosh look at this signature page just madness this I like this edition better than the lettered edition, and it was like a fraction of the price. Um, and this really began my love of SST books. Uh, so, again, commercial, I'm going to still plug for SST. Uh, get over there, sstpublications.uk, um, I believe, and, and see what they have. I, I believe they might even have this book still there, which is, which is madness. And then... Finally, on this shelf, uh, McCammon's Swan Song. I read this book when it first came out in 1987. I have a first edition somewhere. Do I have it out and available to show? <gasps> I don't. I thought I did. Oh, I should have it ready to show, but I don't. Oh, I failed you. I have the first edition paperback somewhere, and... It's it's awesome that I still have it from from my uh, rebellious teenage days. But when I read this book, I thought, oh my gosh, this is a this is Stephen this is a Stephen King pseudonym. There's no way this is not Stephen King. This guy, um, the way he writes, and this is a um, a book about an apocalypse, um, a nuclear apocalypse, but with supernatural elements to it. And I'm like, there's no way. 
this is not Stephen King, but you know, I've come to realize over time that Robert McCammon and Stephen King are two different people with two different powerful lawyers that, um, you know, have no problem getting restraining orders against people trying to discover their secret identities. So I backed up. Um, but I remember when I bought this book, at the time the lettered edition was $400. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to spend $400 on one book. <laughs> oh, that passed, Jeff. What a naive rube. So this is a beautiful book. Um, just a great book. I uh, I have yet to read this edition, but I, I so plan on it. Uh, just a huge doorstop. And I believe it was Sub Press's last McCammon. They, they really did go out with a swan song. And it is a beautiful book. And my favorite McCammon, uh, long overdue for a revisit. But uh, if you want this book, you can probably find it for more than what they originally charged for the lettered edition. So, um, uh, and it won't be my copy because this is sticking with me. So, um, you know, it's so big. I want to show you more of it. Uh, I did do an unboxing on this channel way, 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 way back when. So you can see it in, in greater detail there. Um, but it's so big, I don't want to be fumbling around with it. Here on the shelf and, and damage it. So, um, one more shelf to go, and that is my centipede press shelf. So, uh, for this portion of the tour, and um, and there is so much beautiful stuff on that shelf. We'll get right to it. So, the last stop for today is my centipede press shelf. Centipede press does amazing stuff, and I can't afford nearly all of it. So, um, these are the books that fall within my price range, and I have to say, I've never, ever been disappointed by anything I've ever bought from Centipede Press. But let's start with some stuff. This is a, this is a bowling pin shaped, like, dip bowl. <laughs> but I'm such a fan of Big Lebowski. Um, my wife found it at a thrift shop and bought it for me, and I store my rings in it, my big bad skull rings in it. So that's, it's on my shelf. You know, it's on my shelf. Some really cool coasters, hams, and cores. I will never drink either of these beers, but I like the kitsch value of uh, vintage stuff. So, hams up from the land of ice blue waters, if you know. And then an old Burger King ashtray. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no smoking going around, on around here. This is just to hold like coins and stuff. I don't know, just stuff. Anyway, and then... And then my 19th edition book box loaded with tons of 19th edition stuff. I mean, I can't even show you all of it. I could go through it. I've unboxed all of this for the channel. Um, so you could see those for, for 19th edition goodness. And um, I suggest you get over there and buy some. Great, great stuff. Let's just close that up and put it down here, shall we? All right, well, let me start off, since I just left off with um, some SST stuff. This is the only SST book on the shelf. It's called The Silence. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I will. I will. You know what? Let me move this out of the way first because I'm getting to be a mess. So <clears throat> The Silence by Tim Leban. Tim Leban. Um, really cool stuff. And I have it on my Centipede Press shelf because it's my most Centipede Press-like edition. Uh, that's not, you know, Centipede Press does like black cloth um, <clears throat> uh, is, is the material in almost all of them. So um, I, I'm dying to read this. <laughs> so many books I'm dying to read. Um, and this is, this is up there near the top. Along with Live Girls. Now, um, I recently did an unboxing for this. You could see that this was a, um, a great donation to the channel by a, a really great guy. Just like very, very flattered and happy that he did um, get me this book because this is a book I had to pass on and I didn't want to. Um, um, Live Girls by Ray Garten. And just a very beautiful book. So extremely grateful for that. And then we have Angel's Inferno and um, Falling Angel. Falling Angel is, um, 
is the book that the movie Angel Heart was based on. So in 1987, I saw that movie with Lisa Bonet and um, um, Mickey Rourke and love that movie set in new orleans just about there's a there's a yeah it's just an interesting sort of noir detective supernatural thriller well <clears throat> when jared at centipede press announced he was doing gonna publish the book and the never before published sequel in a set uh i i had to get it so i made it happen and wow this is an impressive impressive set um Beautiful wraparound art, top edge stains, um, the, and matching numbers. Just, just this is awesome. Um, now, I will say Angel's Inferno isn't as good of a read as Falling Angel, but it is extremely enjoyable, especially if you read it right after Falling Angel. Um, it, it feels like you get to stay in that universe that William Hortzberg created. And... Uh, well worth it. I, I was thrilled to read these two books one after the other, um, and and the the love that Jared poured into this these editions is evident. Um, just great stuff. So um, these have gone up quite a bit, but then when reviews came in for Angels Inferno, the value dipped a little. Um, I'll never sell mine, so it doesn't matter. But uh, it, you know that's how the secondary market is well worth it if you can find a, a set and buy them then we have uh the peter watts set so this is blind sight and echoproxia uh this book is just goddamn brilliant this is a uh, blind sight just a, I, i'm not a big fan of sci-fi but wow this this is a brilliant brilliant beautifully written book loved it it's it's very much in the vein of neuromancer if you liked william gibson's neuromancer uh, you would love Blind Sight. Um, very different. Um, Neuromancer is more action oriented, and this is more philosophical. But just, I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. You you read books like these, and you think, "Wow, I'm a moron." I really, I couldn't even conceive of what Peter Watts and William Gibson have put together, um, uh, and let alone understand it as as deeply as they do. But wow, did I enjoy every minute of these. Um, I haven't read Echo Proxia, which, considering how much I'm raving about Blind Sight, <clears throat> I, I should. I should move this up really quickly. And these these editions, um, I also have an unboxing on this channel for it, are gorgeous. Look at that, the foil stamping um, on the cover. So, uh, just love those books. Blood Secrets by Craig Jones. This kind of came out of nowhere. I think it was sort of a surprise release. I didn't, I didn't even know it as a forthcoming book. So, very one of uh, one of Jared's, you know, more uh, subdued uh, productions. But wow, this this is a great read. Reminding me of Rosemary's Baby. Um, if if you need a comparison, just just a really creepy, sick, twisted book. Um, Highly recommend it if you can. I don't know. I don't know if Jared still has any copies available at Centipede Press, but uh, you should check them out. The dogs. This was good. This was okay. Uh, not really. It didn't really feel like a horror book. Uh, so this is the vintage horror. You can see I vintage horror number four is where I start. <laughs> I don't have one, two, and three, and each of those books cost about two hundred bucks a piece. So I'm not going to fill out the set, but. Um, but I, I did enjoy this. It just wasn't really uh, horror. It didn't. It didn't feel like horror to me. Um, it was interesting. It was. It was like a '70s sort of trippy book. Hellhound, again, uh, and and I love these dust jackets that have the the hole in the cover with the with the art in there, um, with printed boards. Jared doesn't do a whole lot of printed boards and and. Uh, he, he did for uh, the Vintage Horror Series. Hellhound was okay. Uh, I liked it. It was a good book. Again, it didn't really strike me as hardcore horror. Um, and it was it's basically a, a sociopathic dog. And you're, you're kind of understanding the world through his eyes, Baxter. Um, good book, though. I would highly recommend it. But, you know, I, I read the synopsis on it. And it really didn't live up to that. It, it felt a little different. So I, di I didn't 
my expectations really weren't met, but that's on me. Sellers, on the other hand, is awesome. This is an awesome book. Um, and this struck me as something that was, um, that, look at that, that's so cool. It felt like uh, this book could have inspired it. Um, I'll, I'll say, I'll just leave it at that. But really great. This is a horror book. <laughs> I loved it. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I you can't find it. It's not on the on the on the website anymore. If you can, I highly recommend reading it, whether you get the centipede edition or not. Um, definitely worth it. So this is the latest one called the Gas. <laughs> this sounds wicked. I did an unboxing for it. You could see this in detail. Uh, <laughs> I'm really really curious about reading this book um and i will and then i have my john blackburn set so there are currently how many we got how many eight eight in the blackburn set um gahan wilson did the art for the first six uh and unfortunately he passed away so he could not finish i read these two loved them um usually not my thing uh, this is sort of like uh espionage or uh, like a political thriller supernatural horror um from the 50s 60s really cool though um i, I liked them I'm, I'm looking forward to reading <laughs> the other six devil daddy children of the night um and for fear of little men and our lady of pain now this i i think i might read our lady of pain next uh, that sounds really interesting. It's inspired by the Countess Bathory. Uh, that that I don't know if it was a legend, a myth, or a real historical figure who um, used to bathe in the blood of virgins to maintain her youth. Uh, sort of so she's compared to vampires, etc. So um, I might move this up if I get to the Blackburn set. This will probably be the next one I read. And then after um, Gahan Wilson passed. The, the torch was passed to um, Bob Eggleton, who I think is a brilliant artist. I have a remark for him. He did the Necroscope series way back when for Brian Lumley, and he brought his brilliance here with Blue Octavo and a Beastly Business. Now, Beastly Business intrigues me as well as Our Lady of Pain. So these two are probably the next in uh, the Blackburn set I will read. Um, Good, fun stuff, man. Just just good, fun stuff. I don't know if you can find a whole set. These are all matching number, Blackburn books. Um, I don't know if you can find that currently or how much that will set you back. But they were they were very affordable, uh, one at a time. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm really glad I got them. I kind of hope he doesn't do any more because uh, I got to kind of watch my spending right now. And I would hate to pass on 9 and 10 if if they're coming around and then finally i grabbed these these were uh he discounted these and i grabbed them from these are cornell woolrich um books he did a whole set i didn't get any of them i just got these two and uh rendezvous in black i read loved it very very cool very you know it's like a crime noir um uh detective sort of feel to it the Bride Wore Black is a, is a, I, I understand, my understanding is it's the inspiration for Kill Bill by Quentin Tarantino, among other films. Um, love the artwork and um, definitely enjoyed this tremendously. Look forward to reading that. So that's the tour today. Um, you looked at SST, Centipede Press, some sub press, um, some mixed you know, trade editions, signed first trade editions. So the most random three shelves I have um, put together for you guys. Um, and up for the last tour is going to be four shelves of Sun Tup editions. I saved the best for last. And I'm really looking forward to walking through those again. I mean, it might be a four-hour video. I don't know. Maybe a couple of days. Maybe it'll be a festival. I'll have to do like Lollapalooza or something. Um, we'll see. Maybe it'll, I'll have to sell a three-day pass for it. But, man, I'm, I can't wait to do that for you next week. 
So um, thanks for sticking around and humoring me and letting me talk about my books. Uh, much to the eye rolls of my daughter, who's sitting on the couch right now. Um, uh, but I, I love talking about these books. And um, I love that you stayed and listened. So stay frosty. Milo here is working hard to make sure this channel is as watchable as possible. Don't let him down. Show him his work matters. And subscribe or watch another video. Milo appreciates it. And it's you'll make a cat happy.